What's the secret to finishing concrete? Well, it's a lot about having a great concrete mix. And I'm gonna give you ways to verify that. And also something you can implement today when you're trial batching your concrete mixtures. So you can get projects like this, ones that you're super excited about. And you're gonna avoid things like this. And like this. And issues like this and over finishing. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a structural engineer, a materials engineer. I'm a professor. But what you need to know most about me is, baby, I'm a concrete freak. So I know you're asking, how can I design a mix to make sure that it's easy to finish? Well, if you stick around, I will show you how different cements impact your finishing. Yeah, like 1L versus 1-2. I also compare different fibers, right? But it's all about testing. Testing, you said, what? Like the slump test? Well, the slump test is cool. If you don't know what it is, it's where you take a cone, you fill it full of concrete, you pull that cone up, and you measure how far that concrete fell down. And how far it fell is an indication to how workable it is. But I'll tell you what, slump test is cool, all right? But slump does not equal finishing. And the more effort it takes to finish, means the more water that has to be added to your concrete. Ah, like this, not good. Or somebody's like spraying the surface like this. This hurts your concrete. This lowers your concrete strength. It decreases the life of your concrete and it causes spalling like this. I'm gonna tell you about the float test. And the float test measures the effort to finish concrete. It works on any concrete that's out there. It's pretty simple. You take some forms that are three foot long, two foot wide, and about three inches deep. There's a yoke in the back to help hold your float at a constant angle. And you fill those forms full of concrete. Then you smooth that concrete out and you make sure you leave a little bit high. You leave it about half an inch high. And then you strike it off. You don't saw it. You strike it off. Then you come back and any low spots you fill in. See how he's filling it in there? And he's checking the height there. The next step is you use a template and a dowel. And you create three one inch diameter, one inch deep holes in the concrete. Yeah, holes. Yeah. Holes! Why do we make holes? Well, when you strike concrete off, sometimes aggregates get plucked out. And it's the finisher's job to fill in those holes. So we gotta measure that. Here's our float. It's been trimmed, or you can buy a small one, so it only rides on the surface of the concrete. So there's our surface. It's rough. We've got our holes in it. And now we're gonna measure how many passes it takes to smooth it out and also to fill in those holes. And the lower the number of passes, the better. That's a beaut. As we're running the float back and forth, we change the strike angle, right? So we always have just the part of the float riding on the surface of the concrete, just like you would in the field. When you do the inspection during the test, you only look in the center, not near the edges, just this area. And you say, how many passes did it take, one, to fill in those holes? For example, here's zero passes, here's after two passes, there's four, yes! Then you say, how many passes does it take to make a smooth surface. There's two different numbers that come out of the float test. Number two is how many passes it takes to make a smooth surface. And you use this visual ranking scale to look at it and compare. You'd say, is it a two? Is it a one? Is it a three? And you pick the surface that you want for your project. If you're doing a DOT type project, maybe you want a three. If you want a commercial job, maybe you want a one. You pick out what it is you want. Less passes are better. That means it's easier to finish. That means less water is gonna be added on the job site. So does this really work? Well, a 
third party, not me, another group compared different types of cements. And they took their concrete mixtures to have the exact same slump. And actually they have the same everything else, but the cements were different. And here it is at zero passes. And here it is after 26 passes. And here's the data. The Y axis shows the number of passes. Lower is better. And there the one two is shown on the left and the one L cement is shown on the right, both with slag. There's with class F fly ash and the one L has higher. That means it took more effort. And there's two different one L's and two different one twos. And every single time the one L took higher. So the one L took more passes. That means it's going to take more effort to finish in the field. But be careful, ladies and gentlemen, just because this 1L took more, that does not mean they're all the same. Some of them, actually I've tested, don't require any more effort to finish than a 1-2, but these did. But if you know this is coming, you can adjust your mix. You can be ready. You can be armed to be prepared for it. So how about fiber? Can you finish fiber reinforced concrete? Well, I'm going to compare eight different plastic fibers, three different steel fibers at three different dosage levels. And I'm first going to show you visually what it looks like at a half a percent by volume. There's a mix at zero passes. Look at all those fibers in the surface. But after four passes, it gets a little bit better. And after 10 passes, it's getting to look pretty good. This graph shows the 11 different fibers at the bottom. And on the far left, that one has no fibers in it at all. On the y-axis, it shows the number of passes it took to make the surface smooth. So lower is better. Now, for each one of the bars, the first bar shows the lowest dosage, then the second bar shows the middle dosage, and the third bar shows the highest. Some of them didn't do, it, didn't do very well. But in general, as fiber dosage increased, the finishability decreased. But not all fibers performed the same. Some did great, and some have issues. So the float test allows you to compare how the fibers finish. There's nothing else out there that can help you do this. But another tool that's really powerful is the tarantula curve. And the float test was instrumental in developing the tarantula curve. If you don't know what it is, check it out. The float test is a crazy useful tool. It can be help you look at cements, at admixtures, at fibers, at different sand contents or blended sands. That's manufactured sands and natural sands together. It is a powerful tool. Anything that can impact the surface finish of your concrete, the float test is for you. So how do I implement this? Well, you can run the float test as you're trial batching your concrete. This could be done by ready mix suppliers. It could be done by testing companies. It could be done by yourself. It's a great way to compare a new mix to one that you know, one that you've trusted, and see how much more effort it's gonna take to finish it. And you can tweak your mix then to make it easier to finish, to help dial it in. You can get the test method in the description to this video below. I have a link to it. You can download it, all the details, just for you, my friends, all for free. So the secret to finishing concrete really is in the mix design and the float test will save labor and stop you from over finishing your concrete so you don't have things like this happen to you ah thank you so much for watching this video please watch my other videos that's the number one way you can help me share my videos with other people get them to watch them and like subscribe leave me a comment below do you find this useful could this help you and of course check me out at concretefreaks.com Join my mailing list, see all the cool, amazing things that I'm up to. A massive thanks to Dan Cook. He helped me develop this test long ago during his PhD. And all of these folks on the slide helped make the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my Concrete Maniacs for watching. Take care. Love you guys. Love you girls. Bye.